Fun. Appreciate it. Um, Senator Duckworth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A gentleman, uh, welcome, and Mr. Sukut, uh, a special welcome to you. Your daughter is one of my wonderful staff members, and I exploit her labor uh, every <laughs> on a daily basis. So she's quite wonderful. I'm glad to have her on staff. Thank you, Senator. We're very proud, and thank thank you to employing her gainfully. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> You're most welcome. Um, across Illinois and our country, we are already experiencing the harmful effects of climate change. Um, growing seasons are changing, heat waves are increasing, extreme floods are becoming more frequent and severe. This is all that we're talking about today. Simply put, climate change is no longer a threat. It's here, the climate has changed. I believe that we must seek solutions to cutting carbon pollution that strengthen our economy and advance new industries and create quality American jobs. Um, the Bipartisan Use It Act combined with action Congress took last year that extended and reformed the 45Q tax credit will help to make sure we accomplish these goals. Uh, Senator Whitehouse mentioned this. I look forward to working with my colleagues on this committee to advance and further improving this promising legislation. Uh, Mr. Walzer, Illinois has some of the best saline storage locations in the country. Um, last Congress, Chairman Barrasso and Senator Whitehouse worked with me on the la adding language to the Use It Act that requires the Department of Energy to author a report to make recommendations to project, develop to project developers on how best to use saline formations for carbon sequestration. Can you share why this report will be important to the future of permanent carbon sequestration? Absolutely, Senator Duckworth, for, for three reasons. First, um, Given the scale that w of, of what we need to do in terms of eliminating carbon emissions on the planet, uh, saline is going to be our biggest target. Uh, there's really no substitute. Uh, we need to move forward on enhanced oil recovery and utilization, but if we're really going to make the cuts we need to make, that's where we're going to that's where we're going to store the carbon. Uh, second, uh, there are innovations that are occurring. For example. Um, uh, what, uh, being able to produce water, particularly in arid areas, uh, so it's not just a, it's not just a storage space. It's potentially a place where we can also uh, develop useful products. Uh, and third, um, uh, it's it's the area that it's the resource that's most abundant. Uh, that's why uh, ADM is doing that project in Illinois and saline because it's it's. Uh, there is some EOR potential, but it's completely dwarfed by the availability of saline resources. Uh, we have more saline resources in, in North America than we have EOR or any other target. So if we're not developing this resource and we're not being thoughtful, then we're putting ourselves at a significant disadvantage. Thank you. So, you know, you, you mentioned ADM. They're one of the largest, one of the world's largest food processors, and this is a one-of-a-kind project in Decatur, Illinois. It captures carbon dioxide which is created as a byproduct at a corn processing facility and stores it safely almost a mile and a half underground in the Mount Simon sandstone. Um, a lot of attention is spent discussing on how um, CCUS can be applied to the power sector. I believe use the Use It Act will help spur industrial capture projects like the one in my backyard. Mr. Walter, you mentioned ADM's project. Can you talk a little bit about how decarbonizing uh, uh, projects like ADM um, can teach us lessons about how we can decarbonize the industrial sector? Absolutely. It's a very important project. It's a, a first of a kind, um, and industry is one of those hard-to-reach places in terms of decarbonizing. Uh, CCS is almost certainly going to be necessary to decarbonize the industrial sector. Uh, fortunately, uh, there are uh, plants like uh, the ADM plant that are um, ready-made in a sense. They have a low-cost low CO2 supply. They have pure CO2 streams. And there are many of these types of facilities from ethanol, from hydrogen and ammonia production, other sources that we can quickly move forward on. And we expect 45Q to really move first in those areas. Um, so we think it's both absolutely necessary and an area that we expect to see uh, a fair amount of activity on in terms of uh, utilizing incentives like 45Q and the Use It Act. Thank you. Mrs. Suku, um I know you said that you're a finance guy and, and not a scientist, but I would think that uh, a report that would come out of something like the Use It Act that would make recommendations to project developers um, on how best to use saline formations for carbon sequestration would be um, something useful. Can you um, talk a little bit to that? You know, in Illinois, for example, um, wind power has created 100,000 jobs in 10 years. I, I sort of see that there's potential for, on the economic front, um, uh, for some great benefits here as well. 
Absolutely, Senator. I, I think uh, when we put iron in the ground, well, we put it in, for, as I said earlier, for 30 or 40 years to the extent that we can get more information and we can use it in terms of uh, making sure that it, it is critical and can be used and the fact that, that it gives us the information that we can go forward with, that's one of the most critical things in the utility industry, quite frankly. So I would think it's absolutely critical that we have information like this in, in, in the Use It Act. So I would encourage, very strongly encourage it to be a part of, a, a part of the Act. Thank you. Um, Mr. Oldham, uh, I just have a minute left. Did you want to add anything to the discussion so far? Um, uh, you know, I, I think one of the things, uh, you're absolutely correct, that renewable energy and, and the driver of that is a critical part of um, developing jobs. Um, one, of the, one of the key things to remember is the importance of not just reducing emissions, but also reducing the CO2 already in the atmosphere. Uh, Senator Carver has an excellent bathtub analogy that I think he uses um, <laughs> to help explain this. I've been using it for years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, a, a, a continued focus on CO2 removal, and you're quite correct, saline aquifers are a fantastic place to store CO2, and Illinois a great place to do so. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Th thank you so much. Senator Sullivan. 